fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high yo silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> agent in the early western United States could match the courage and resourcefulness of the masked rider of the plains. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, he led the fight for law and order in the new territory, and in time brought peace and security to the frontier. No greater champion of justice can be found in the pages of history. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on! Silver! We're heading south for Chatfield! Sam Silver! Away! For several months, a series of well planned stage robberies had taken place outside the town of Chatfield. Oh, 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 oh. All right, mister. Now throw down that express box there beside you. Blasted crook, say the talk. Don't reach for that shotgun, neither. We ain't carrying no cash this trip. No, but we are different. Now let's have it. You're the same two crooks held up my stage of four. And you're the fella said you wasn't carrying cash. Don't give us no argument this time, mister, or we're liable to let daylight through you. Say, do you fellas always know when I'm carrying cash? You ain't missed once, sir, and we don't aim to. Now, on your way, fella, on your way. Get up. Get up there. Get along there. You can look for us the next time you got something worth the taking. <laughs> Finally, a coach from the east brought a well dressed passenger about 50 years old. Ascending from the stage at Chatfield, he studied the crowd until he saw Dan Crocker, the stage line's division manager. The stranger walked toward him at once and... Crocker! Huh? Yes, yeah, sir. Well, great land of Goshen if it ain't Mr. Elliot. My gosh, what you doing here? Where can we talk? Private, you mean? Yes. Well, I don't know any better place in my office. But say, uh, what about your baggage? Can't I... Your driver uh... will take it to the hotel. He knows who I am. You'll engage a room for me. Oh, then that's all right. Come along. But why didn't you write you was coming, Mr. Elliot? My stars, I never had no least notion of this. I sent no word on purpose. Oh. Well, step in. Limby. Huh? That'll be enough for today, I reckon. Just leave the sweepings go and run along. 
I'll have Clem finish it. But I'm almost done. You heard me, Vamoose. Sure. Sure, if you want me to. It'd only take a minute, though. Out. Well, I guess Gus will be looking for me down to the cafe anyway. And close the door. Oh, sure, Mr. Crocker, sure. Who's that? Limpy? Oh, he's just what you'd call a handyman, I guess. Swamps out the cafe for Gus Hastings' nights and picks up all jobs daytimes. Why? He doesn't look very bright. <laughs> well, if he was, would he be doing this kind of work? Well, now, Mr. Elliot, sit down. And tell me what's on your mind. These holdups. Hmm. Thought that might be it. According to the reports I've received, there have been more than a dozen within the last three months. Do you know what's going to happen if they don't stop? I could guess. I'll have to sell the line or go into bankruptcy. Every time money we've accepted for shipment is stolen, I have to make it good. Within the last 90 days, I've paid claims amounting to more than $60,000. I know. Well, Mr. Elliot, what do you want? My resignation? Out there and don't be a fool. Well, I'm the man in charge here. I suppose you could say it was my fault. I could. But I don't discharge men who've worked for me faithfully the moment something goes wrong. I've always tried to do my best and... And I would have known it long ago if you hadn't. No, Dan, I'm not here to blame you. I've taken it for granted that if you couldn't get to the bottom of this, then there's a very definite reason for it. I came to Chatfield to learn that reason in person. Do you want to know something funny about these holdups, Mr. Elliot? What is it? There's never a stage held up less than it's carrying dust or cash. I think I see what you mean. These robberies aren't hit or miss affairs. The bandits know when valuables are being carried out. Yes, so. Then who's tipping them off? There's the problem. I see. You've checked the employees? Half the holdups happened when nobody here but me knew cash was being shipped. Not even the drivers or guards. You sure of that? I'd take oath on it. What other measures have you tried? Well, I've done all the usual things, but none of them worked. But I'm glad you come here. I hired a fellow the other day I think will get results. Someone to make an investigation, you mean? Right. His name's Ace Devlin. Don't know whether you ever heard of him or not, but I can tell you he knows his business. Used to work for Wells Fargo. His name's familiar. If it ain't, it ought to be. In his time, he's caught more stage robbers than any dozen other fellows Wells Fargo ever had on its payroll. I'd like to meet him. <laughs> Looks like you're going to. That's him just rode up now. Wait a second, he'll be in here. Hmm. Competent-looking fellow. And plain pison to crooks. You take my word for it. Plain pison. Ace, come here. I uh, made some progress, Dan. Have you? Good. But first, let me make you acquainted with Mr. Elliot here. He's the owner of the whole shebang. Mr. Elliot, this is Ace. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. These holdups bring you west, Mr. Elliot? They did. Well, then, if they did, I don't think you're going to have to stay here long. I think I've got a line on the fellow behind all this. You have? Yep. Well, that's good news. Ace, who is it? Well, maybe I spoke a little hasty. It... It could be either one or two fellas. Right now, I'd rather not mention any names. I wonder if either one of you gents thought of something. Thought of what? Dan's been suspicion of everybody working here. He's tried every which way to trap the fella tipping off them highwaymen. But he's forgot the fellas who'd be sure to know when the cash was being carried. Who did I forget? The fella shipping cash to the bank. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be... Of course... If I were going to send out money, for instance, I could tip off the stage robbers to go as to the time I meant to send it. They'd hold up the stage, take the money, then divide it with me. The stage company would have to make good the entire loss. I'd lose nothing and be ahead my share of the money that had been stolen. Ace, I think you've hit it. So do I. Wait. Yes? That makes me think. Nearly every merchant in town has lost cash at one time or another. But there's one particular fellow who ain't never sent cash east without the stage was robbed. Gus Hastings. Right. Hastings? Uh, the fellow I mentioned before, Miss Elliot. The fellow that runs the cafe in town. You think he's responsible, Devlin? Well, he could be. Like Dan says, the stage has been held up every time he shipped cash. And if it is him, why, that would explain the rest of the robberies. Oh. Well, folks get to talking when they drink, Mr. Elliot. It's Hastings' business to sell them drinks. 
So if he kept his ears wide open, maybe once in a while he'd overhear somebody tell it when he had cash to bank. Will uh, you be able to get proof against him? You mustn't forget I said there was another gent could be to blame. Well? I'll know which one tonight. Hastings is out of town for the day. But when he gets back, I aim to ask him a few questions. And when you have? I'll have my answer. What the? That came from outside this window. There he goes. Riding a white horse. Ace. Yeah? Keep that horse in mind. If that mask on Bray riding it ain't one of them hold-up men, then my name ain't Dan Crocker. <laughs> It was not an outlaw who had raced away from the express office, but the lone ranger on his great stallion, Silver. He thundered westward, never slackening speed until he came to the secret camp where Tonto waited. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, there. Oh. Tonto. Uh I want to disguise quickly. What you do? Ace Devlin's got on the right track at last, Kimasabi. Oh. Tonight he's calling on Gus Hastings at the cafe. Him guilty? That remains to be seen. But if he is, things are likely to happen. Ah. And I plan to be there. All right, Tonto, hurry. Got no time to waste. The Lone Ranger swiftly removed his mask, assumed a disguise, and borrowing Tonto's horse Scout, headed back for Chatfield. He could not know, however, that Hastings had returned to town earlier than expected. When the Lone Ranger entered the cafe, Hastings was already in the office with Ace Devlin. The man on duty behind the bar looked up at the Lone Ranger's approach, then... Evening, stranger. Good evening. Where's Hastings? Busy right now, mister. Like a drink? No. Is Hastings here? Sure. Back there in his office. He... Hey, hold on. Yes? You can't go back there now. Why not? Because the boss ain't alone. He's with that fellow, Ace Devlin. From what they said, they wouldn't take kindly to being disturbed. You better wait here. Is that the door to his office there at the end of the bar? That's it. But don't you go back there. I'm not. I think I'll go outside and take a look around. What in? Those shots came from inside Hastings' office. You bet they did. I'm going inside there. Come on. Didn't them shots come from the office? Who's in there? I know Gus is there. I've seen him go in. So's Ace Devlin. Go inside. Better stay out, stranger. Maybe they got some... I said stand aside. Locked. The door's locked? Right. Give me a hand. We'll have to break in. Everyone get back. There may be shooting. Come on. Hastings. I didn't do it. There were three shots. They must have come from the window. Barkeep, take a look at Ace. He may still be alive. Right. Now stand back. Don't crowd in here. Come and go for the sheriff. I'm right here. Let me through. Stand aside. What's happened here? You probably know as much about this as we do. We heard shots in here and broke in. Hastings was standing here as you see him. Ace was on the floor. Barkeep, how is he? Dead. Then, Gus, I'm arresting you for these murders. Sheriff, I never killed him. I swear it. I... Everything's happened so fast, I I just don't know what to say. Uh, you say you had to bust in here, stranger? Yes. And that means that the door was locked. There ain't no other door, so it's the only way out except for that window. Anybody in here besides you and Ace? No one. Then it has to be you. Dirty killer. He ought to be lynched. Turn him over to us, Sheriff. We'll save the law hanging. In one moment. Hush up, you fellas. Hastings isn't armed. Where's the gun that killed Ace? Why, I never noticed. Here it is, Sheriff. Huh? You got it, Limpy? Uh, I guess it's the one. Where'd you find it? Well, well, Gus claimed them shots come from outside, so I looked, and there was a gun right there below the window on the ground. Sheriff, whoever shot Ace must have dropped his gun in his hurry to get away. You claim them shots come from outside, huh? They did, Sheriff, they did. Well, they could have. Only there's two things say they didn't. Huh? One is, I know why he's called on you. He had you pegged as the hombre behind the holdup. But I never... And the others, something won't be easy to get around. Gus, this happens to be your gun. Come on, Scout. Come on. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger returned to camp and told Tonto what had happened at the cafe. While he spoke, he was quickly ridding himself of his disguise. Then... Hand me my mask, Tonto. Ah, uh, here, here, mask. You ride again? Yes. What do? This affair isn't finished yet, Kimasabi. Them catch killer. You mean they've jailed Gus Hastings. There's a difference. Him not killer? Well, I won't say that he isn't. I will say, however, that I doubt that he is. Why do you think that? The sheriff claims Hastings killed Ace, then dropped his gun outside the window. It's quite possible he did. But if he had enough presence of mind for that, why didn't he follow his gun through the window and make his escape? Mm. A moment's thought would have told him he'd be arrested. Not right. As a matter of fact, when we broke into the office, he seemed dazed. He acted exactly as a man who found himself faced suddenly by a situation he couldn't understand. Uh. The law could say he'd killed Ace on impulse. But I still claim that a man who realized he must rid himself of his weapon would realize that he'd have to get away himself. Maybe you're right. I'm almost certain I am, Tonto, and for better reasons than I've told you. What then? One was the position of Ace Devlin's body. It agreed with Hastings' story that the shots came from outside. Ah. Uh-huh. And there were powder burns on the windowsill. I saw them plainly. Mm. They were exactly where they should have been as someone had stood outside and steadied his gun against the window and then fired. What did Lawman say? He didn't see it. You not tell? If I had, the sheriff might have let Hastings go free. Mm, me no savvy. Tonto, the killer must be the man responsible for the holdups. Earlier today, Ace told Elliot and Crocker he'd know who was guilty after he'd spoken to Hastings. Uh-huh. The guilty man feared the result of that conversation and murdered Ace to protect himself. Uh-huh. While Hastings is held for the murder, the real killer will think himself safe. If Hastings is freed, then the search for the killer will start all over again. Not right. And Hastings may die because the killer believes he needs to be silenced. No, Tonto. As long as the sheriff guards against the lynching, Hastings is safer where he is. You know, killer? I will. You got plans? Yes, call scout. Here, scout. Here, Silver. A word of advice before we ride, Kimasabi. What that? If the killer's the man I suspect, he's one of the shrewdest outlaws we've ever met. And one of the most dangerous. Be careful. Uh, yep. Take care. Good. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. Come on, old fellow. Come on. <laughs> Later that same night, the stage eastbound from Chatfield labored to ascend a steep grade on the trail. Dig in, you critter. Pull, past you, pull. Come on, it ain't much further. Put your weight into it. Get up. Get up. Get up. But just as the stage finally reached the top of the grade, several shots rang out. Two horsemen appearing suddenly from out of the shadows blocked the trail. Rain up. Out goes again. This is a holdup. Don't reach for your gun. Just drop that express box to the trail and be quick about it. You. Quickly. You can have it. I'll get it for you. Follow orders or my next shot will be for you. I'm I'm getting it. Drop it over the side. There. Good. Now on your way. I'm going. But, mister. Yes? This is one time you got fooled. There ain't no more cash in that box than there is in my hip pocket. Get up. Get along there. Get up there. Get along. Get up there. Get along there. Did you hear what he said, Tonto? There's no cash. Which is exactly why I hoped. You've got the box? Uh-huh. Then back Take to it. camp, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Away. When the stage returned to Chatfield late the following day, news of the holdup sent Sheriff Markham to the express office. Entering, he found Elliot and Dan Crocker inside. Evening, fellas. Hello, sir. We've been expecting you. I got here as fast as I could, but I just got word. So another one of your stages was held up, huh, Mr. Elliot? Exactly in the same manner as the others. But without the same result. Well, that's one of the things I wanted to find out. Was there cash stole? Not a penny. You're a positive of that, huh? I am. You can look at our records. There's a list of everything went out on the stage last night. You'll find we weren't carrying one dollar in cash. Well, that's good news. To both of us, Sheriff. I can't afford many more losses. Nope, I don't reckon you can. But that ain't what I meant. No? Uh, what you have in mind, Sheriff? Why, I thought you fellas could see it for yourselves. If there'd been cash on the stage, and them crooks got it, 
Why, that would have proved that Warren Hastings tipped him off after all. He's where he can't get word to nobody. Would have had to been someone else. Oh, I see. <laughs> Scared you'd have to start another hunt, huh? Can you blame me? I... No. Uh, who said that? It came from... There he is, there at the window. Right. Why, son of a rich... Don't slap up, Sheriff. You either, Dan. Why, you can't bluff me. You covered. My gosh, that draw. It's... It's the same mess, man, we saw yesterday. And one of them crooks that held up the stage, I'll bet a million. I am. And I'm coming in there by the front door. Don't draw while you're waiting for me, though. I have a friend here who'll keep you covered every second. You watch can't. Him, me watch him. There's somebody with him. A redskin. Oh, what do you figure they want? I don't know, but I don't imagine we'll be long in finding out. You won't. All right, what are you after? First, we'll return what we took last night. Tonto, push that express box through the window. Ah. They're returning it because they want nothing in it. And try to think straight. If we were the outlaws you believe us to be, we wouldn't bother returning the box because there's no money in it. We just throw it away. You've admitted holding up the stage. Last night. And a dozen other times. No, only the once. You can't expect But that. I won't bother convincing you now. That'll come later. If you think there's cash in the safe, then I know I... there isn't. And what did bring you here? Tonto and I came here to prove that Hastings is neither the murderer of Ace Devlin nor the man responsible for the stage robberies. Oh. Last night I wasn't positive of his innocence, Sheriff. But tonight I am. And I'll prove it. How? The holdup last night was part of a trap to catch the real killer. Huh? He took the bait. And tonight the trap closes. Sheriff, you and Dan and Elliot are riding with Tonto and me. This is ridiculous. Sheriff, can this fellow tell Give us... Give us orders? Well, with a drop on us, I reckon he can. Now you're acting sensibly. The amount has already been led to the back of the office, Sheriff. Yeah? We've saddled horses for the other two. We ride at once. Yes, No I... use putting up a fuss, Mr. Elliot. We'll do as the masked man said. <laughs> Although it was almost midnight, a small fire burned just inside the mouth of a cave many miles from Chatfield. Two men sat within the circle of light. Both were heavily bearded and powerfully built. Both had the appearance of men who make their living outside the law. The elder of the two broke the silence with... Spud? Huh? You know, I've been thinking. Yeah, I've been doing a heap of thinking. And I don't like where it gets me. Where does it get you? Well, what I've been thinking about most is that killing in town. You know, Ace Devlin. It's got me worried. Figured the boss did it, huh? Well, don't you? Mm, maybe. What of it? Well, it's like to spoil a mighty good thing. The boss ain't suspicioned, is he? Well, not that I've heard of. Then how do you figure anything's spoiled? We can keep on operating as long as he's all right, can't we? But how long is he going to be all right? What do you mean? Well, with the killing, the law has to get busy. Oh, I know they jailed Gus Hastings for it. What I'm getting at is this. If the boss was fool enough to kill once, what's to keep him from doing it again? The second time always comes easier than the first, you know. Maybe next time he'll get caught and us along with him. Well, if he was, he wouldn't talk. What would he gain by but it? But this no, one... No, how's anybody going to connect us up? Shucks, that's the slickest part of the setup. We never meet. When the stage's going to carry cash, he leaves a sign where we can see it. Well, we've got the cash... We take his share and leave it where he said. Nobody could follow us to him or him to us. Idaho, you're worried about nothing. Well, maybe no, you're... as long as he stays away from us, we're in the clear. We oh, don't. Oh, Paul Chase. What the? Who's? Oh, yes, the Paul's in here. The boss. Here, I turn the light where I can see you. If you don't, I shoot. Boss, what's the matter? I'll stay out here where you won't have a target in case you get fooled. <laughs> so you thought you'd branch out on your own, huh? Thought you could work by yourselves and I'd be scared to call you on it. Well, you see now, Ace. What are you talking about? That hold up you pulled last night. What else? Huh? Hold up? What hold up? Did I end it, huh? Well, that must mean there was cash on the stage, even if I didn't know about it. So you can hand it over. Boss, you must be loco. We didn't hold up no stage and we didn't get no cash. You can throw it out. I'll get it. But listen, I'm trying... Try to... Let me talk to the boss. He's got something all wrong. Boss, we didn't even know there was a holdup. We didn't what? know... Huh? I got one gun trained right on your shirt and another on Idaho. I reckon you know I'll shoot if I have to. And if you think I won't, remember Ace Devlin. I give him what I'll give you if you keep on lying. Now toss out that cash. Give me five minutes. Then clear out. 
We've worked together for the last time. You're right, Limpy. Drop those jets. What? No! Draw your guns and run for it. Now's our chance. Right. Come on. Oh, my hands, miss. Just smash my hands. That'll get these two. Me, get them. Blast them. Five. No. The engine's got me. Stand still. Stand back. Stand back. Stand Kevin. Got him? You can take over. Here's all three. Stranger, you handle them fellas slick. Are they disarmed? You bet they are. Didn't you see it? The masked fellow shot the gun right from Limpy's hand. So you're the skunk who was behind all the holdups, Limpy. You can't prove nothing. We don't have to prove anything. You've talked enough to convict yourself a dozen times over. Limpy, you brought these fellas here. I never, I never knew there was anyone around. You can quit the arguing. The masked man done it. Huh? By holding up the stage to make Limpy think you was pulling holdups without his orders. The masked fellow knew that was the only way to get Limpy to lead us to you. <laughs> and he fell for it. I reckon if it hadn't been for the stranger in the engine, Limpy, we'd never have caught you. Pretending to be just a handyman around town without no spending money was mighty clever. But I still don't understand why you suspected Limpy, stranger. I doubt that I would have if he hadn't killed Ace. You mean killing Ace to save himself was what trapped him? Right. I was convinced that Hastings wasn't guilty. Because of the circumstances of the killing. That left only Limpy as a suspect. He worked regularly for Hastings, which explains why the stage was held up every time Hastings sent money on it. He got odd jobs with the other merchants, which explains why their money was stolen only occasionally. Why, hey, Thunder, huh? that puts me in mind of something else. Remember the day you come here, Mr. Elliot? I do. Well, Limpy was sweeping out, and I told him to leave. But he must have hung around and heard Ace say... He'd know who was guilty after he talked to Hastings. He was outside. I saw him as I rode away. So he figured he had to kill Ace. Well, Limpy, I reckon you've reached the end of your rope. Say, that's a good one, ain't it? The end of his rope. By gosh, when you hang, Limpy, that's just where you'll be. I'll see Get him up, Scout! just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.